take on this. So this week I've actually got quite a bit to catch you up on. I've sort of been chipping away at all these different things. So it's mostly kind of just like a bit of progress on a bunch of different projects and I'll just show you where I'm at with them. Once again, I think I want to start off with the Moody Fairy because it's been one of the longest ones on the needles. That's not true. I think the set of style sweater has been. I'm sure that has been. Regardless, the Moody Fairy is kind of making a bit more progress. I'm really getting close to the end of it. But the thing is, I'm up to the slip stitch pattern and in last week's video, I'm pretty sure, I was doing the navy as the main colour and then the beige as the background spots. And I didn't like it because the navy was so dark that you couldn't actually see the stitch pattern. So it kind of, it didn't really show off the design. So then I thought, okay, I'll swap it and I'll do beige as the main colour and then navy as a background. So it looks like this. Which I think looks fine, but then as an overall piece, oh my gosh, it's, I should have, should not have stopped mid row, but I think I was just looking at it as I was knitting and I thought I hate it because I just don't like, if I kind of clear this all out, I don't like how beigey it's looking. It's looking too beige. And I think I want more pops of white. Cause right now, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you have quite a bit of the white on this original slip stitch pattern. So what I may be thinking, I'm thinking of repeating it, but with the black. So the white instead of the beige is the main color. Sometimes it's hard to picture what colors will look like in your head when you combine them. Maybe I just needed a bit of a break from it. I actually don't think it looks too bad now. Now I'm looking at it. I was considering doing it with that white as the background and the navy as the main. But then I thought it could also just be a, too much of a repeat of the original slip stitch. So maybe I'll keep doing it as it is. Especially maybe when I add the bottom, the bottom colors on in the last section, which is section six, which is, um, I believe I'm gonna do the white and the pale blue again. And I'll be doing that in the cabled section in a cabled pattern. So actually I'm glad I put a hiatus on it because I think that's given me some time to reflect back on it. And I think actually it's okay with the navy and the beige as it is. So that's where my Moody Fairy is at. Um, it hasn't had much love this week for that reason in particular. What I have been working a lot though is my father's set of style sweater. So I've gotten this far with it, with the sleeve. So I've pretty much finished the first sleeve. So there's all the pattern there. It's funny because if you can see here, there's like kind of an obvious line on this row, but then nowhere else. So the reason for that line is that I was trying to experiment with the way that I knit color work. So normally what I will do is I will do two handed knitting. So I'll use my left hand for knitting continentally and my right hand for knitting English style. And I find that's easier to kind of break them up and keep the, the threads apart. It is slower. I find I'm a lot slower knitting English style than I am continental, but it kept it cleaner for me. But then I tried mixing it up and I thought, you know what, I'll try and do that thing where you have one need, one color going over this part of the knuckle and the, this part going over the other, just so that you can keep it all on the one hand and I can knit continentally and knit the two colors. But I found it really difficult because as I was knitting, the threads would kind of want to come close together. And I think because I knit a more, well, it's like a Norwegian style. So I tend to keep my finger really flat I don't want to keep it arched and I think it's really hard for me to arch it and keep it that way to knit continentally. So then as a result, I think it just didn't, the tension was a bit funny and, and a bit off. And so that's what's caused this line to happen because it doesn't happen anywhere else. And that was really the only part that I tried it in. Oops, you can see it there. So I make it that a bit more practice because I would like to do, I would ideally like to be able to knit color work just from the one hand just continentally rather than having to mix English and, um, and continental knitting. But it is now starting to get to the more complicated part of the pattern because I'm going to have to start to do steaking as well as cutting in to make a collar, which is a bit strange to me as to how I will cut away fabric and then pick up stitches to make a collar. I definitely will have to watch a lot of tutorials on that before I even try to attempt it. I'll probably knit a swatch and just practice on that because there is no way I'm cutting into this first time round and making a mistake. But with this one, it was funny. It said to turn the sleeve inside out. So I guess like what, turn it inside out and then knit. But it's like, I don't understand the purpose of that. Why, if you want it to be garter stitch, why don't you just knit? Or if you want it to be a purled side, why don't you just purl? Why do you need to turn it inside out to knit? Um, for the last few rounds, I don't really get that. So there are some parts of the pattern that 
are not straightforward or rather not clear in their intention and because they're so simply written um, I think it obviously expects that knitters understand the reason for doing this or especially because it is it is a Nordic design that people are used to those style of patterns and they know what to do um, whereas for me this is my first time I've ever knit something like this so this is quite a new experience for me so hopefully all goes well um, and hopefully I can find something on YouTube that just explains what needs to be done because sometimes I just want to see the visual of someone else doing it to understand um, you can read the words on a piece of paper in a pattern and understand what they mean logically but kind of not really be able to interpret that into a practical sense so that's what I want to do is just be able to understand the practicality of what the pattern's asking for but that's where I am with the set of style sweater so yeah just sort of ticking along soon I'll be able to start the second sleeve and then once that's done I'm really onto the home run there's not much more else to do with it and it was nice as well because as I mentioned um, I wanted it to be finished in time for my dad's birthday and it wasn't so instead I surprised him just by showing him what I'd been making so far and it was really reassuring because he loved it. He, he just thought it was so beautiful and I was worried he may have thought it was maybe a bit too... I don't know, effeminate is really not the right word, but maybe just a bit too intricate for his style. And I think in many ways it is, but he thought it was so beautiful and he looked really excited to, to have it, um, to be able to wear it. So that was really nice to see. And it was quite big in the body. Um, as I mentioned, he is built like a greyhound. I feel like even though I cast on for his chest circumference, which I believe the pattern wanted about seven inches of positive ease, I think it was too much. Um, I should have really scaled that down, I think, for someone of his build. But lesson learned, that's okay. And worst case scenario, I might just like chuck it in the, <laughs> in the washing machine or the dryer and just try and shrink it a little bit to make it fit him a bit better. But that's where I am with the set of style sweater. Then, got a few of my project bags all lined up. And these are all ones I've made, so living in this project bag which has these little little sheep or not even sheep I guess they're kind of like alpacas are they are they lambs or alpacas what do you think no I think that's a lamb that's a lamb um just out of interest was I finished I finished that sock that I was saying I was just knitting on for a bit of fun and then I cast it on the second one to it and I was looking at it thinking, this feels a lot broader than this one. And then I've put them up next to each other. Look how much bigger this sock is. It's so weird. And it's with the same needles, obviously same yarn. I guess my gauge must have really changed. Or I don't know what it is that has made this so remarkably bigger. I've never had this issue with socks before. And now it's starting to make me think, did I not knit this with this needle? I really don't know because that's a significant size difference to have it coming out all that way. So I may have to rip this out and start again, um, maybe size down some needles. Cause you can see at the start here, even like with this, the ribbing to the body is pretty similar. Whereas this, it almost is like a puff. So, that's really odd. I'm not really sure what caused that. Now, speaking of gauge, I started my stonecrop cardigan and I didn't knit a gauge watch. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to delude myself to thinking I would do that. There is no way I was going to knit a gauge watch. So I've started on the collar here. So just a really simple, um, it was a tubular cast on and just a one by one rib believe yeah one by one rib and this yarn is so soft it is unbelievably soft once again it's the Lana Gato VIP um, which is a blend of superfine merino and cashmere and it is just heavenly soft however I can't progress any further at the moment because I don't have the right needle sizes the needle um, the pattern calls for 3.25 I believe I'm pretty sure it's 3.25 for the ribbing and then 3.75 for the um, the body of the cardigan and I didn't have anything in 3.75 or well I did but it's these really hideous aluminium needles that I bought when I just first started knitting and they are cheap and nasty and I hate them and there's something about knitting with them that makes it feel like 
nails on a chalkboard. I just can't stand them. I really should throw them out, but I'm so loath to throw anything out, especially when it's perfectly fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with the needles. They're not broken. I just hate them. <laughs> um, so instead I've ordered some 3.75 um, millimeter Addy Clicks. So just the interchangeable tips to go with my Addy Click collection that I already have. So then once those arrive, which hopefully should be in the next week or so, they are coming from the UK though, but then I'll be able to continue a little bit more with this project. But oh my God, it's going to be so delightful to wear. Just so glorious, so soft. And I really like the color. I really like how it's not that pure white. It is that sort of creamy, ivory, pinky sort of color. It's really lovely. So the other thing I've worked on this week was the Honey Clutch by Petite Knit. Now I didn't, it's not true, I didn't work on it this week. I actually finished it months ago, maybe even last year, I'm pretty sure. And it is such a delightful pattern. It was, I think it just looks so beautiful. I mean, how could you not, how can you not love that? It's just so adorable. Um, and it finished up very, very quickly, even though I think it is probably more of a slightly intermediate to advanced pattern, I suppose. It finishes really quickly and I think the after effect is great because it's, it is stunning. The yarn I used for it was Biche Bouche and I accidentally ordered it thinking it was Le Petit Mohair. I thought it was just a larger ball of it, but it was actually a perhaps even an Aran weight, um, if not DK, something like that. So it was much heavier, but it's still a silk and mohair blend. So I used that. The color I was a little disappointed with on the website, um, they called it a light beige. And it's really gray. I would, I think that like, it, that's hard to call that beige. That's gray. I tried to dye it because I dyed some avocado yarn again recently. And so I decided to chuck this in the dye bath near the end just to give it a little bit of color. And it affected it a tiny bit, but not really very much because I did want to take away some of that gray. Because once again, I love insipid colors, but there is that sort of fine line between insipid and drab and I want to kind of just keep on the neutral side you know I don't want it to be too depressing just some minimalist <laughs> um, but anyway so I made this ages ago and I just kept putting off um, doing a lining for it and putting the zip in I think it was mostly because of the color because I did want to dye it and then I kept not doing that so when I had the opportunity to just chuck it in that dye bath the other week I did once again even though it didn't really change the color but I finally thought, okay, I've given that a go. Now I can finally put the lining in. So the zip I actually bought on um, Petite Knits website. It's a YKK zipper. I think it's just called like Vintage Brass. They're quite difficult to find elsewhere. Um, I don't know how she got them. I've seen some on Etsy, but they're always really awkward lengths, like 30 centimeters and stuff. So it would be nice to find somewhere to buy more of these. Um, that's a bit more local to me. But got that little zip there and then inside I've lined it let me open this up because it is glorious so it's a printed linen and I believe this is called morning mist or something like that so these delicate little flowers on this linen fabric it is just ugh, it makes my heart sing I am such a sucker for that sort of cottage core um, whole aesthetic I bought it on Etsy from a seller in Poland, again, um, I believe her name is Milly Susan, something like that. I'll link it below, um, but she's got really glorious prints. Um, so beautiful. I really love her style and I ordered a few different prints from her. This was one of them and I'm definitely going to be using it a lot more. And I think especially seeing it in this project, I think this would make such a great gift. As I mentioned, it was really quick to knit up. I was surprised how quickly I finished it. Which is silly because when I look at it, of course, it's tiny. <laughs> it's like you pretty much just already done a swatch there. Um, you know, you could finish this very quickly. And um, yeah, I highly recommend it. I've seen some of her other ones. Um, one of it was the, is it the Winter Clutch? I'll put a photo in. That I absolutely love. I would really, really love to make that. And I know there's been a few other variations of the Honey series. Like there's a, that sort of drawstring pouch. Once again, super, super cute. So thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you enjoyed all the little projects that I had to share with you. I would love to hear what you're working on, especially any of my viewers who are in the, I almost said the Southern Hemisphere. That's me. <laughs> if anyone who's in the Northern Hemisphere and you're coming up to summer, like what kind of things are you working on? And for any viewers in the Southern Hemisphere along with me, 
Are you working on anything now that's coming up to, you know, the cooler seasons? I would love to hear, as always, and I love when if ever any of you leave me comments, it just absolutely makes my day. And I love seeing, you know, the same sort of faces and names pop up in the, in the comment section. It just, um, yeah, I love it. It's just so wonderful. So thank you again for joining me, and I can't wait to chat to you soon. Bye.